Alrighty, let's all stand and grab our hymnals, 368, nothing but the blood, 368 this morning. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my part in this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing this my plea. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other fount i know nothing but the blood of jesus this is all my hope and peace nothing but the blood of jesus this is all my righteousness nothing but the blood of jesus oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow Nothing but the blood of Jesus. All righty, church, you may be saved.
Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 he has because he has he has you see I'm telling you I'm nervous today and the reason I'm nervous is not because who's in the White House it's because who's in this house I sat down this morning sat on that pew like we do most every Sunday morning and sensed a spirit of complacency and apathy. That's it. And I saw, Lord, have I missed it today? He said, oh, no, you have missed it. He said, because where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. You see, because when I sit amongst people who are sitting here in complacency, and you know you're guilty, and you're sitting, sitting here in a spirit of apathy, uh, then what it does is it quenches the Holy Spirit of God. And when the Bible says quench not the Spirit of God, so what that does is it kind of puts the fire out. It throws a wet blanket on things. But see, when somebody stands up and says, I just want to thank God for Calvary. Had it not been for an old rugged cross, had it not been for the hill called Mount Calvary, if it had not been for a man named Jesus, your soul would be forever lost. You would be like the rich man in Luke chapter 16 that when he died, the Bible says he lifted up his eyes being in torment and he cried out said, Father Abraham, he said, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he might dip the finger, dip his finger in the water and put a, a drop of water on my tongue. He said, for I'm tormented in this flame. If it hadn't been for Calvary, Miss Janet, you would be on your way to hell as soon as you draw your last breath. We need to learn to give God thanks. You say, who made you mad? The devil and, and carnal Christians. 
carnal Christians. Makes me mad. Notice this. The Bible says in Luke 23 and verse 33, he said, when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right hand, the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Let me tell you something, what Malachi 3, 6 says. And you better be glad for this verse of Scripture right here. He said, you sons of Jacob, let me tell you why you're not consumed. He said, because I'm a merciful God. Let me tell you why, we ain't all, we're, we, why we're all here today. It's because of the Lord's mercies. And Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 says this is of the Lord's mercies you're not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Hey, complacent Christians don't deserve to be in a church house this morning. They deserve to be in the grave. Amen. Say amen, James Bird. Amen. I'm telling you what we deserve is to be judged and to be put in the ground because we're such sorry Christians. Amen. Amen. That's truth. That's truth. What'd you come to church for today? Brother Abram, you know why you're a member of Lex Wind Baptist Church? I'm telling you why you're a member here. And I know it was God's will, but here's what your heart desires from this pulpit and from this preacher. Truth. And when you come here, you told me, you said, let me tell you the reason I'm here is because you teach and preach truth. Hey, truth will set you free. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Hey, listen, you're not living an abundant life. I can tell. I can tell. You said, are you a judge? I am. I'm judging. You can judge me. How do I look like I'm doing? But I can tell you how you look like you're doing because it shows on your face. Jesus said, I've come that your joy might be full. How come ain't nobody here smiling? Huh? Uh, Brother Jack walked in. I said, Brother Jack, it's good to see you, man. How you doing? He said, I ain't, I'm doing terrible. I said, that's a lie. I said, that's a lie. I said, they can't nobody be doing terrible with a smile like that on your face. Amen. Hey, listen, you come to church to hear truth that you might be set free because the world has bound you down all week long. That's why you come to church. And you ought to give up. Hey, listen, you say, well, I ain't got nothing to be thankful for. Well, uh, you know, these shoes right here is not my favorite shoes. I was thinking about while I sang that song. These shoes right here kill my feet. But watch this right here. You say, well, preacher, why you wear them? Uh, it's because this is the best looking dress shoes I got. Amen. But watch this right here. They might not be the, 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 the most comfortable shoes. Hey, listen, but I still have shoes, amen. I have shoes on my feet. I have plenty to eat. But see, you know what? If you don't just thank God for those little things, you ought to thank God He's given you a preacher who will tell you truth. And I ain't scared of nary one of you, and you don't have to even sign another check for me. You can say, get out, and I'll get out. But I'm here to tell you, I'm going to be what God told me to be today, and that's His messenger. And I, I, I'm sorry for some of you that come visiting today, as you probably never come back. You say, preacher, don't you want us to come back? I do want you to come back. I want you to join this church. I want you to live for God. I want you to glorify God. But if you can't handle what I'm going to say today, you probably won't come back. Amen. It's good to be in the house of God this morning. I'm glad to be here. Miss Teresa said, well, I'm glad to be in the house today. I said, boy, David said, David said, I'm glad. He said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. I'm glad to be here today. You know why I'm glad to be here? Because he's here. You say, how do you know he's here? Because he's here. Jesus said, I'm going to send you a comforter, and he's going to abide in your heart. Hallelujah, he abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as a walk the never way, for the comforter abides with me. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. Mom said, I'm a debtor. Paul said, I'm a debtor. Praise God, I'm a debtor. I owe him. 
The Bible said, Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works among all nations. When's the last time you said glory to the Lord? Hey, let me help you. Say glory to the Lord. Glory to the Lord. Hey, say glory. glory. Say, at least I helped you. Hey, I was walking yesterday. Sarah's got a cousin with COVID-19 and she's overweight. That already throws you into a high-risk category. She's laying there in the hospital and I started walking and I said, God, I'm, I'm, I'm not as merciful as I should be to people. I'm not as compassionate as I should be to people. I said, and I started praying for Lori and I started praying and I was walking and I was praying and I was walking and my back was hurting every step and my legs were hurting every step and I kept on walking and then all of a sudden I said, God, I said, get glory through glory. And I'm telling you what, hey, I've talked to her this morning on the telephone and she's the only one on the floor that's not hooked up to oxygen, no BiPAP machine. Hey, listen here, no ventilators in her room and the peace of God's on her life, amen. Get glory through glory. I don't know where this service will go today. It'll go where God wants you to go. And my prayer is that it goes to your heart. Because if it only gets to your head, then God's wasted his time and I've wasted my time. Amen. I'm glad to be here today. God's been so good to me. This week's been a great week. He said, draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. That's what's wrong with you. You're double-minded. You're unstable in all of your ways. Amen. That's what's wrong with you. You said, preacher, we didn't come to get beat up. You, we come to be exhorted. The Bible says, uh, preach the word, be instant in season. And it says, reprove and rebuke and then exhort. So my first two duties is to, is to give you a good whipping with the word of God and then pick you up and say, now, let's go. Amen. And if you can tell me that ain't my job, uh, then just somebody jump up and tell me right now it ain't my job. That's what my job is, Pat. Make you feel bad two out of three times. And on the third time, say, Pat, it sure is good to see you here this morning. Amen. You say, well, I think you're out of line. No, I'm not. In, I'm, I'm, listen, the Bible says walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I'm not out of line. I'm in line. Hey, listen, I'm in line because God said, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which thou hast prepared. Hey, I'm in line. I'm following Jesus. He said, Follow me, and I will make thee to become fishers of men. I'm in line. Following Jesus. Eyes on Him. Eyes on Him this morning. Trust in Him. Trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Amen. Are you listening? The Bible says in Revelation uh, number 2, and I believe it's verse number 10 or 12 or somewhere right there, He said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. And if you're saved, you're part of the church. And that means you're supposed to be listening to what God's saying. You said, but preacher, it's you. It's a good looking tie you got there. Hey, hey you say, it's you. Preacher, that we're here. No, 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 no. You better look beyond my voice and hear the voice of God. That's when I'm reading the Bible. I must look beyond what Paul's writing and hear what God is saying. Amen. You've got to believe that God put a preacher in front of you just like he put a prophet in front of Israel. And, and listen, they wasn't listening to the prophet. They was listening to the message that God sent them. What are you listening to today? What are you waiting on today? Some of you is waiting on 12.15. Well, I've already done that word out that it wasn't going to be 12.15. And I hope you cut your crock pot down and your oven down and put it on warm or you're going to have to buy your lunch out today because what you had on the crock pot is going to be burnt. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, We'll just say glory to God one more time. Everybody, glory to God. Glory to God. That's good. That's good. He deserves it because he went to Calvary. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth him should not perish but have everlasting life. I'm glad I'm saved. I don't know about you. I'm glad I'm saved. Well, uh, you say, preacher, what are you going to do now? I'm going to try to slow down a minute. 
and uh, make an announcement. I don't even know what kind of announcement we got to make. I don't, somebody took my bulletin. But uh, anyway, we, won't have to, we don't have to make too many announcements. I want to say I'm glad that God's been good for the last 13 years. For the last 13 years, you say, Preacher, what's that mean? Well, 13 years ago today, I become the pastor of this church. It's today's my anniversary. 13 years ago today, I become pastor of this church. Now, some of you is wishing I wasn't, but that's okay. Those that said they wished I wasn't when I first come here, they're not here no more. So that means in 13 more years, you don't wish I am. Guess what? You may not be here. Amen. Because I'm not, I don't need it, Herm. Because I'm not going nowhere, huh? Oh. What now? Yeah, day before. Yeah, that Thursday service will be on Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Okay. Ladies meeting just coming Tuesday, 7 o'clock. 13 years ago today, Ms. Jan and I become pastor of this church. I'm one, it's, hey, it's been the greatest blessing of my life. I'm outside of being married and having children and being saved. God put me into the ministry. And not only did he put me in the ministry, he's kept me in the ministry. Because I'll tell you what, if you look at what I'm looking at week after week, you too would want to be, you too would have wanted to quit a thousand times over. Y'all know what I'm talking about? If you looked at what I look at every week, Bradley, you're getting a privilege of looking at it. Bubba, you see it now. If you looked at what I'm looking at week after week, Sunday morning, Sunday night, went Thursday night, you would have wanted to quit this job a thousand times over just like I have. He said, Preacher, what's kept you here? Him. What put you here? Him. What's going to make you leave? Him. Amen. Well, we need to pray. We need to pray. And we'll have a congregational song. And then I'm going to get into the message. Here's what I want you to pray for this morning. I've been thinking about all kinds of people this morning. Wayne's an answer to prayer. I was praying for him this morning. He, he came to church last Sunday morning after a surgery on Friday. And uh, they didn't. it was unsuccessful. And he's got to have another one because of that. And... Uh, and so uh, Wayne's been sick all week, and we need to pray for him. I, I've asked God to help him, and I, I asked God to let me see him this morning. And he said, well, you're looking at me. Well, I said, praise God. That's an answer to prayer. And then I called, and I spoke with Lori, and I said, Lori, I, I just want to call and check on you. I want to have a word of prayer with you. I said, how are you doing? She said, I slept five hours last night. She said, that was such a blessing. She said, about 12 o'clock, I rolled over on my side, and God gave me five hours of sleep. And so I had prayer with her. No, no oxygen. And uh, uh, that means things ain't getting worse. That means things are at best steady. And that's good. And so I give God the, great, uh, the thanks and the praise for that. And then I thought about Eddie this morning. I had Eddie on my mind before I left the house this morning. I grabbed those two containers and put them in that bag. And I said, these are here. I got to get this for Eddie. He needs these. And so I, I, I had Eddie on my mind this morning. Been praying for him. I pray God to heal him. You know, I believe God can heal him. You say, how do you know God can heal? Because he has. Because he has. He has. You said, can you give me one instance? Yeah, the first one I thought about this morning was old Jairus' daughter. She's dead. She's dead. Jesus said, uh, got news from that, 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 uh, that, that servant come to Jairus, and Jairus is begging Jesus to come to his house and touch his daughter. She was sick. That servant come said, trouble not the master. said, your daughter's dead. Jesus just looked over and said, fear not. I only believe. I only believe. Huh? That's what he said. That's what he said. If, he, if he's a liar, he told it. I'm just repeating what he said. Jesus went to Jairus' house. Went up in the room where she's at. She's laid on the bed. She was dead, sure enough. Everybody was making wailing. They were crying. No doubt it's a sorrowful time. And Jesus said, don't worry about it. I got it. He said, made arise. Took her by the hand. She got up right then. Death. He has power over death, by the way. When the doctor says there's no hope, oh, there is hope. I sent Eddie a verse of scripture the other week. It said there is hope. In the book of Job, James, it says there's hope if a branch is cut from a tree. It's laying on the ground. Listen here. There's hope that it will bud again. 
You say, where's the hope at? If he can catch one cent of water. If there's hope, there's hope. If, the, if that branch that's cut from the tree, you know most branches that fall from the tree, they're dead. People gather them up and they throw them in the fire. But God says there's hope of that branch if it can get a scent of water. You know what water's a type of? The Word of God. I told Lori, I said, download you a Bible app. I said, I have no confidence in doctors. I have no confidence in what they can do. Listen here, I don't know what kind of care you're going to get up. I said, but download you a Bible app and put that Bible, that audio Bible up your ear. And I said, you just flood your soul with the Word of God. I believe there's power to heal in the Word of God. You said, preacher, you're radical. No, I'm faithful. I believe by faith that God's Word can heal. Wayne, that'd that'd do you some good. It'd do you some good to cut off Fox News and put you a Bible app on your phone and some earbuds in your ears and listen to nothing but the Word of God. That'd do Eddie some good. And you need to pass that on. Turn the TV off. Hey, listen here, and turn on God's Word. And just flood your soul. Do you some good. Hey, to turn off your TV and put you some earphones on and download you a Bible app and listen to the Word of God over and over and over again. The Word of God is quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder, a soul and spirit and the joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Hey, God's Word has power Hey, to heal and to help. And everybody in here needs help of God. And I'm the one pointing you to the Word of God. There's hope. There's hope. The song said there's hope, so be strong. There's hope. God has sent me here to tell you there's hope. Praise God, you don't need a pessimistic pastor. You need an optimistic pastor. My hope is in the Word of God. Josh, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and His righteousness. Amen? So I want you to pray this morning with me, believing, as two agree touching anything on earth that they shall ask it shall be given of our Father which is in heaven. I want you to pray that God will touch Wayne. I want you to pray that God will touch Lori. I want you to pray that God will touch uh, touch Eddie. I want you to pray that God will touch Miss Janet right here. Hey, we got to start praying. You know what's wrong with this church? We don't pray enough. We don't pray enough. We don't believe God. We don't believe God. Hey, God is able. Hey, He's more than able. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in. Who works in us? It's the power of the Holy Ghost. He's able. He's able. We just have to believe. Fear not, only believe. You get that word from the doctor. And it's that word that starts with C. But then you ought to respond with a word that starts with H. Hope. There's hope for you, Debbie. There's hope for you. You say, how do you know there's hope for me? Because there was hope for me. I know how you feel. I know how you feel. You're struggling with depression. I know how you feel. You say, preacher, what helps you? What pill are you taking? Uh, my daddy's uh, pill of choice was, uh, was uh, somebody, what was that pill of choice? Uh, no, there's some other word. It's when he first, uh, it starts with a P, I think. Anyway, he had a pill of choice. Uh, Prozac. Hey, you know what my pill of choice is? It's called the Word of God. The Word of God. That's my pill of choice. Amen. I don't need Ativan. I don't need Prozac. I don't need, a, a, what do you call them today, the hydrocodone, oxycodone. I don't need methadone. You say, why don't you need those things? Because I hold to an unchanging hand who pinned down the Word of God. It's forever settled in heaven, Pat. You ought to smile about that. I'm holding on. And He's holding on. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray this, or we're going to believe when we pray. Because there ain't no sense in praying if we ain't going to believe. There ain't no sense in praying if we don't believe. Who in here is going to believe when I pray? We're going, to, we're going to pray, we're going to believe. In prayer, believing. Amen. I don't know if Eddie's at home watching. COVID this past week. Okay. All right. Hey, God's able. God's able. Prayer believing. Boy, there's all kinds of people catching COVID. 
And it's pretty rough on people, especially people that have uh, underlying conditions. Pretty rough on them. We need to be praying for them. We ain't prayed enough for people with COVID-19. Uh, we ain't prayed enough or COVID-19 be gone. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin and heal their land. That's right, Pat. You know why COVID's still around a year later? It's because God's people ain't praying. Amen. Because God's people ain't praying. He said, if you'll seek me, you'll find me. If you'll seek me with all your heart. Superficial prayer don't get the job done. The Bible said the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We've got to pray with passion. Hey, a fervent prayer, a passionate prayer. You say, how do you know that works? <laughs> Am I preaching good? You always want me to preach without outline, so I don't even have, I ain't even opened my Bible yet. Watch this right here. You said, How do you know that works? Because over yonder, uh, over the, uh, Miss Tanya's not up here, but over yonder, uh, 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 it, the, the unjust judge, the parable of the unjust judge. Uh, the Bible says over in Luke 18, 1, it said, Men ought to always pray and faint not. And what we've got done, we've got used to COVID 19 being around, we've stopped praying. Hey, listen to this right here. He said, Hear the parable of the unjust judge. That woman went to that unjust judge and said, Judge, hey, I need you to avenge me of my adversary. He said, Woman, get on somewhere and leave me alone. But she kept coming back day after day, day after day, knock, 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 knock on the judge's door, kept on knocking, not kept on knocking. And here's what the Bible says. The Bible says the judge granted her request because of her continual coming. The Bible says in the continual tense, and I'm not very good at Greek nor English, but the Bible says in the continual tense, ask and you shall receive. That means keep on asking. It says ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Whosoever asketh receiveth. He that seeketh will find. And him that knocketh it shall be opened unto you. I'm standing on the promises of God today. Amen. I'm going to tell you what's going to get Lori Jean Valter out of the hospital. Prayer. You know what's going to get Eddie off the bed of affliction? Prayer. You know what's going to take care of Brother Wayne? Prayer. You know what's going to help Miss Janet? Prayer. Hey, listen, that's all our hope is in. It's praying to a God that's able. Prayer. Hang on, Pete. Better days are coming. Preacher won't be as mad. Prayer. Prayer. You know what we're doing? We're, we're, we're succumbing. When my dad died of cancer, he didn't die of cancer. Miss, Miss uh, uh, Joanne, sorry to call you Miss Evelyn. That's what, you have, that's what you go through when you're thinking about everybody, Renee. I, I, look, at, I look at Miss, uh, honestly, before God, I about done it over here. I'm yes, thank you. Y'all going to have to start wearing name tags. <laughs> but when my mind starts going on, Thinking about everybody, I look at you and call you Joanne and look at you and call you Evelyn. You know what that's a sign of? That's a sign of me trying to bear the load. Paul called it the care of all the churches. The care of all the churches. I don't even know what I was saying, but anyway, it was good. Oh, when dad died. He didn't he didn't die of cancer. He he died because of pneumonia. He died because of pneumonia. The pneumonia got in his lungs where he had the cancer. And he succumbed to the pneumonia. He couldn't breathe. And it took his life. Let me tell you why we're succumbing or being overcome by our diseases. Huh? It's because we won't ask God to help us overcome our diseases. We're being overcome when God has called you an overcomer. Boy, there's one thing my daddy taught me when I was a little boy. Can't, never could, do nothing. You say I can't. My daddy says you can't because can't never could do nothing. I, I'm going to tell you something. I ain't the easiest dad to be around. I'm not the easiest husband to be around. And I sure ain't the easiest preacher to be around. And, and most of the time I'm not very sympathetic. And I, I understand that. But I'm telling you, hey listen, we are allowing you, the preachers are allowing congregations to keep on making excuses. And those are things you should quit doing. 
Excuses, excuses. We hear them every day, James. I might let you jump up right now and sing the song. Amen. All we're doing is excuses, excuses, excuses. Oh, well, it was God's will that we died. Really? It was God's will that we were overcome. Really? When Paul said, I'm more than conqueror through him that loved me. Huh? It ain't no way it's God's will. He bore. I, if you know anything about born, some, uh, Dana's, uh, Dana's uh, uh, what verse is it? All we like sheep are a verse. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have laid upon him the iniquity of us all. If you know anything about the Old Testament, in the Old Testament they would bring two rams. One ram for a sacrifice. The other ram for a scapegoat. They would lay upon that ram uh, the, the sins of all the people. And they would lead uh, that ram out into uh, the wilderness to take away the sins of the people. Hey listen, Jesus took upon us the sins of the world. Took upon him the sin of the world. Our sins on him and the Bible says he bore those sins he took those sins away and with our sins he took our sicknesses we're succumbing to sickness because we won't put our faith and trust in him amen who in here who in here believes that Jesus cleansed the ten lepers raise your hand now, you know what leprosy is in the Bible? It's a type of sin. It's a type of sin. The Bible says your sins and your iniquities have separated you from your God. Isaiah 40 something, 48 2 or something like that. I just throwed it. I had it wrote down in here and I throwed it in the trash can. I should have brought it out here. But it's in Isaiah. Look it up. Your sins and your iniquities have separated you from your God. When you're out of the, out of the will of God, when you're separated from the presence of God, watch this right here then you're going to be overcome by your sins and by your sicknesses. But in the presence of God, there's no way. In the presence of God, God's going to allow sin or sickness to stay right there. Huh? You think God's going to allow lame people to stay in His presence? Uh Uh-uh. Let's look in the Scriptures. Let's look in the Scriptures, Renee, because remember this. When Jesus passed by, the dead would arise. Oh, my goodness. When Jesus passed by, the dead would arise. Some that were blind, he'd open their eyes. The leopards were cleansed and the dumb made to talk. The lame and the crippled, they'd rise up and walk. He's still passing by. He's still passing by. He still extends mercies today. Everywhere he goes, he's wanting to help. He's wanting to help somebody today. He still extends mercies today. And the blood that he shed on Calvary's tree still washes our sins all away. One night on my knees at an altar of prayer. Jesus passed by and rescued me there. He come on a rescue mission. I called on His name while He was nigh. What a wonderful change since Jesus passed by. He's still passing by. He's still passing by. He still extends mercies today. Hey, listen here. The hem of His garment, praise God, is passing by your way today. Hey, the woman, hey, the Syrophoenician woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years, hey, she heard about Jesus and the healing power of His hand and she she said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. As she pressed through the crowd, it wasn't easy, Joanne, to keep on pressing. It wasn't easy. Hey, just press through the crowd. Hey, press through the hey, press through the problems in your life. Press through the pain and the hurt and the doubt. Press through all that stuff and touch the hem of his garment that Amen. she was made whole. Amen. Don't give up. Wayne, don't give up. Joanne, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. If she'd have looked out, paid attention to the crowd that day. The Bible said the crowd was so big, Miguel, that they were thrown at him. I'm talking about they were on top of him. He was pressing on him. Everybody wanted to touch Jesus. Multitudes. If she had paid attention to the crowd, guess what? She had never touched the hem of his garment. 
Shay, you need to touch the hem of his garment. You're about to give up, but you need to touch the hem of his garment so you'll be made whole. <laughs> Help me, Wayne. I know you got a little bit in you. Wilt thou be made whole? Do you want a new life? Wilt thou be made whole and believe in Christ? Do you want a new as white as the snow. Hey, watch this right here. God's question to you, wilt thou be made whole? You know what whole is? Here, Joanne, here's what whole is. No cancer. That's what whole is. No cancer. Ain't it right, Wayne? No kidney stones. That's what whole is. You know what whole is, Brother Abraham? Whole was when that man went into that temple that day and he was hiding his hand because it's withered. It's withered. He was ashamed. He was hiding his hand. Now you, could, you could be here today and you're withered because you're hiding some sin. Jesus says, stretch forth your hand. And look here. By faith, he believed in the Word of God. You, somebody better believe what God's saying today because somebody needs a touch from heaven. Hey, watch this right here. He said, Jesus said, stretch forth thine hand. He stretched forth his hand. And look right here. The Bible says his hand was made whole. You know why I'm so nervous today? Because he's here. And he wants to do something for you. He wants to do for you what he's done for me. But you got to believe him. You got to believe him. I believe him today. Christians are powerless in this world. Let me tell you why. They don't believe God. They don't believe God. You read your Bible and you're praying, but do you believe God? Because I know I preach Bible reading. I preach Bible reading. I preach praying. But do you believe God? Believe God. And I'm going to tell you why I don't think many people believe God. And I'll show you why many people don't believe God. It's because when we get ready to do the invitation, they won't get out of the pew and come to the altar. You see, when you believe God, you'll move. You're too ashamed. And here's what he says. If you're ashamed of me, I'm going to be ashamed of you. You don't believe me, I'm not helping you. He did not many mighty works in his own hometown. You know why? Somebody tell me why. Because of unbelief. Hey, there's some great needs here today. There's some great needs here today. Some of you's got some mental needs. You say, preacher, you're one of them. Pray for me. Some of you's got some spiritual needs. Some's got financial needs. Some's got some physical needs. But um, here's what some good news is. There ain't a need here that my God can't supply. Amen. Not one. Now I wanted to preach out of Malachi today. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. I believe honestly I preach enough outline here. Oh Miss Joanne, I wanted to go back to that a minute. Um, if she had paid attention to the crowd, guess what? She would have never touched his hand. But you know what else were they? If she had paid attention to the critic, she'd have got no help. You know, a lot of people criticize other people for wanting to get to Jesus. But she said, I got to get to him. You know what the Bible says? She'd went to the doctor. You said, Preacher, you've been to a doctor. I know, but I've been to the Lord first. Jesus can't help you, so the critic says. You need to go to the doctor. She said, but I've been to the doctor. Matter of fact, I've been to the doctor for the last 12 years. And, 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 and they ain't helped me, but matter of fact, hey, listen, I've got worse. And not only have I got worse, but I have spent everything that I have. But here's the good news. Watch this right here. It don't cost you anything to go to Jesus. 
The Bible says she spent all she had and Jesus said freely, hey, freely, I'll give it to you freely if you only believe. You know, one the, you know why that there's not a cure for cancer? Because there's too much money involved. There's too much money involved. And the love of money is the root of all evil. And you think there's some doctor out here going to allow some a scientist to come up with a cure? Why, well, no. That's the most ridiculous thing you ever heard of. You know why there ain't a cure for uh, cancer in the hospital over there? It's because of this right here. It's because there's too much money involved. But Jesus says you can freely get a cure if you'll believe. Jairus, go back to Jairus and I'm finished. Oh, that's 10 or 12. That's an abomination to quit preaching before 12. Because you laughed, I'm going to preach to one. Let's go back to Jairus one more time. Go back to Jairus. Jairus had heard his doctor, his daughter was dead. Those are, them, them words is tough. Them words is tough. I was going to, I was going to watch my dad that evening. Mom had to go get food for the dinner at Box Mountain the next day. And I was on my way down Germanton Road, or 66. And as I turned off of Stanleyville onto Germanton Road, the phone rang. And mom said these words, your dad's gone. <laughs> it was tough words. I remember when we left your house, James, and we went home to go to sleep that night. And Lisa called. And said, you need to get back down here. And we all got in the car to come back. And on, as we were getting on 52, Lisa called back and said, mama's gone. Those words hurt. I know what it is to, to lose. I, I've not lost a spouse, and I can't even imagine what it would be to lose a spouse. But I've lost a dad. I've lost grandparents. I've lost friends. I know what it is to go by the casket. My, one of my greatest friends, is Harold Bassett, helped me in ministry. I know what it is when a friend dies. And then a week later, I buried another friend. I know what it is. I know how it hurts. And I know what emptiness it leaves. But watch this right here. Jesus said, Fear not. I only believe. I, I don't have all the words today to say right. I, I think what's been said has been said. And, and I think it's a help. I... Uh, I want to preach the book of Malachi. Maybe I need to study more on Malachi. I do need to study more on Malachi. I, we need to be passing out faith promise cards and there's all kinds of things we need to be doing concerning missions. But somebody in here just needs to know there's hope. Somebody needs to know there's hope. And there's hope. So hold on. There's hope. God is sitting me here to tell you there's hope. And he knows what you're going through and what the future holds. Because Jesus lives, there's hope. <laughs> I'm glad for Calvary. I'm glad for Calvary. There's one more thing I'm really glad for. Up from the grave he arose. It's a mighty conqueror. Or he spoke. He rose the victor from the dark domain. Now he lives forever with his saints to say he arose. He arose. Hallelujah. Christ arose. You know how come there's hope today? <laughs> because he lives. Because he lives. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. 
because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Renee, because he lives, you can face tomorrow. I wish I knew, but I don't. But he does, because what he says is he was tempted in all points, like as you were, yet without sin. He knows how you feel. He, know what it, he knows what it is to lose a loved one. God so loved the world he gave. The Bible says it pleased him to bruise his son. That you might have life and have it more abundantly. I can't fathom, we can't even fathom the depth of the Father's love that He would give His Son to die for us, that we might have eternal life in Him. I don't know who God's helped today. He's helped me. But see, you've got to make a decision today. Do I? I need help. Everybody in here would raise their hand and say, I need help. Needing help and getting help is, is this. The difference between the two is needing help is you can acknowledge that by sitting here. Getting help, you acknowledge it by getting up and getting to the altar. Mm -hmm. God, I need help. I'll never forget. And I'm glad. Even if I do forget, even if they, my mind goes and they put me in a rest home and they lock me behind those double doors with Alzheimer's. And I forget. <laughs> and I forget. January the 1st, 2003. He'll never forget. Because my name is written there. And it's forever settled in heaven. Everybody needs help. There's people at home needs help. Eddie needs help. He's at home. Lori's in the hospital. She needs help. And you're sitting here and you need help. The difference between needing help and getting help is. Miss Joanne, here's one more. So we have the crowd. If you listen to the crowds, you won't get any help. If you listen to the critics, you won't get any help. But if you listen to you, you won't get help. A lot of you, a lot of you just say, there's no use, there's, there's no hope. There's, you're listening to you. And here's what you're saying. I can't. Some of you said I ain't. Some of you have never been to the altar since I've been at this church. That's just simply saying, God, I don't believe. And I'm not going to get help. Well, guess what? You're exactly right. You ain't going to get help. You need help of God today. And we're going to finish. Don't laugh. Don't you laugh. It's 12 o'clock straight up, Brother Abram. <laughs> now is the accepted time. You say, what does that mean? God said, now's the time for you to get help. Today is the day of salvation. Salvation don't just mean from sin. It could be from sickness. It could mean from self. Now is the accepted time. Behold, today is a day of salvation. And if you want to get help, I believe the healer is in the house. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Our Heavenly Father,
You said, he that cometh to you must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek you. Jairus sought you diligently. He came, he heard where you were at. He came to where you were at. He cried out, Jesus, have mercy on me. Blind Bartimaeus sat by the highway side begging. And he cried out, Jesus, have mercy on me. The Syrophoenician woman pressed through the crowd and by her actions she cried out, Jesus, have mercy on me. Father, I believe today by faith that you are. And you are a rewarder of them that diligently seek you. I believe your word today. And I believe what we've preached has been the direct will of God. I, the Lord has been the Spirit of God moving within me and through me. And I thank you so much for using me. And I want to say this morning, Lord, I'm asking you to move right now by your Spirit in the hearts of those that are here. May you give them faith to believe that He is, and He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek you. Father, I pray you'd bless the invitation. I pray right now, Lord, that, Lord, you do a mighty work today. You said, where two agree is touching anything on earth that they shall ask, it shall be given of our Father which is in heaven. I pray for Lori. She can't be here, but I know she's praying. And I know Sarah's praying for her right now. And that's two. I'm glad it doesn't require more than that. Jesus is there praying. He's interceding for us. The Bible says He's sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. I'm, I'm glad for that. I'm glad there's three there. You said where two agree is touching anything on earth that they shall ask it shall be given of our Father which is in heaven. And Lord, I'm praying for glory right now, God, that you would do a miraculous work. And Lord, as we said yesterday during our walk, get glory through glory. Use her as an instrument of righteousness. May those nurses and doctors experience the peace of God. May they sense the power of God and the presence of God when they walk into that room. May they say there's something or someone unusual here. May you use her today to get glory. And Father, I pray you'd heal her, help her, and get her up, get her going again. And I'll thank you, and I do thank you in advance for all you're going to do. Lord, I pray for Eddie right now. I think some of the things we've been through this year has made us closer. And I'm glad for that. My friend's in need. Lord, you said there was four men in the Bible that had a friend. He was lame. He was laying on a bed. He was paralyzed. The Bible says that those four men carried Lazarus they carried him to Jesus by faith. I can see at least four of us. I know Brother Aaron would agree with me. Lord, I know Bubba agree with me. I know Bradley will agree with me. There's at least four of us praying this morning for Eddie right now. And God, by faith, we're carrying him to Jesus. And God, if we have to tear the roof off this place to get him to you, Lord, we're going to do that. And I pray for him right now, God, that I don't want you to just comfort him. I want you to cure him. God, there's nothing too hard for you. You're the God of, I don't want, I can't mention everybody, Lord, but you're the God of Abraham, and you're the God of Isaac, and you're the God of Jacob, and you're my God. And I'm so glad I can say that. I hope everybody here can say that he's my God. Father, I pray for Eddie today. You touch him. Not comfort him only, but cure him. And God, may you raise him up to, uh, God, give him a voice that would glorify you in all that he does. I pray for his family today, God, that they would see this miraculous move of God in their life. And, and God, you draw them, draw them that they may be saved. I don't know how many of them saved or lost, but I know, God, uh, you know, and I pray, God, that that would take place today. Use everybody. You said, if I be lifted up from the earth, we'll draw all men. 
unto you. I pray, God, you'd just do that today. Then, Lord, I pray for Wayne. He's an answer to prayer. I prayed for him this morning, and he's here, and that's an answer to prayer, and I say thank you for that. Lord, sometimes we want to see more than that, just him being here. I want to see him well. I want to see him, Lord, strumming that guitar up here again with Bubba, talking about the, uh, 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 the, the little country church, Lord. I'm glad for the church. I pray, God, you touch him, not only his kidneys, but I pray you touch his lungs, his body. God, give him breath to sing one more time. One more time, God. We at least want to hear him sing one more time. Wilt thou be made whole? Do you want a new life? Touch him, I pray, right now. Miss Janet needs a touch too, Lord. And uh, there's so many in here. She needs a touch. She's not really sure uh, of the future. And Lord, none of us are sure of the future, but you're sure of it. And so I pray, God, that you touch her body. It ain't nothing too hard. Lord, we know that whether it's a kidney or a liver, it could be cancer. There's nothing too hard for you. Uh, you speak diseases out of people's body. You speak the word. Lord, you, all you got to do is speak the word. And I just pray today that be done. I pray this church would see such miracles take place that God, the, the, the people be drawn from all over and say, hey, hey, Jesus is in the house. The healer's here. And they come to get what they need from you. Lord, it's not just a healing or help we need. God, we need Him. We need salvation. We need Jesus. And I pray, God, that salvation will take place. I believe that with all my heart. When people get healed. They get help. They get saved. I believe all that. So, Lord, touch these people, I pray. Lord, there's others have needs. Debbie Zimmerman needs help. You know the help she needs. Debbie Stuckey needs help. You know the help she needs. Lord, everybody needs help. We all need some kind of help. May your people reach out today and touch the hem of your garment that they are made whole. Father, I pray you bless the invitation. I've done my part. Now I'll hand it over to the Holy Spirit of God. And he would speak to the heart, draw the life to Jesus Christ. I thank you and praise you for all the results of this hour together. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you want me to be whole? Do you want a new life? January the 1st, 2003, I said, you know what, Lord? I'm not sure. If I died right now, I'm going to heaven. I said, but I sure don't want to go to hell. I said, I believe Jesus died for my sins. He was buried and rose again the third day. And I'm asking you today to save me. I don't know why y'all looking at her. Some of you need to get up and come to the altar. That's what you're worried about. You're worried about coming to the altar, but you're waiting on somebody to go. Well, the first move's already been made. I'm glad I got help. I'm glad I got a new life. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. I'm a new man today. I said, Lord, I want a new life. Guess what? Here I am, a new man, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works. Let's all stand. As the altars begin to fill, you want to come? You want to call on the Lord? You want to see great things? Trust Him today. Believe in Him. Hey, what is it you need? What is it that you need? Won't you tell Him? Won't you tell Him what you need today? Sometimes we go through trials that are so hard to bear. We lift our face toward heaven, saying, God, are you really there? I've asked that same question. Yes, I've been down that road. But looking back, I now can tell you, he's all always let me know there is hope so be strong there is hope God has sent me here to tell you there is hope and he knows
knows just what you're going through and what the future holds. And because Jesus lives, there is hope. He was bruised for our transgressions. He was nailed upon the tree. He cried out to his Father, Why have you forsaken me? But through my suffering Savior, He brought healing to our pain. And the one who raised up from the dead can restore us all again. There is hope, so be strong. There is hope. God has sent me here to tell you there is hope. And He knows just what you're going through and what the future holds. And because Jesus lives, there is hope. Sometimes we go through trials that are so hard to bear. We lift our face toward heaven, saying, God, are you really there? I've asked that same question. Yes, I've been down that road. But looking back, I now can tell you he's already led. Let me know there is hope, so be strong. There is hope. There, you believe there is, hope? is hope. God has sent me there here to tell There's you hope. there is hope. And he knows just what you're going through and what the future holds. Because Jesus lives, there is hope. And He knows just what you're going through and what the future holds. And because Jesus lives, there is hope. Bible said the devil is a deceiver. Bible says he's a father of lies. And he's fed you a lie. And here's the lie. There's no hope. There's no sense in calling on him. But let's believe what the Bible does say. The Bible said there is hope. And you need to get a tune of this song in your heart. And see that other thing I was thinking about here. If you need convincing... Convince yourself through the Scripture that there's hope. When the flesh, the world, and the devil says there's no hope, you need to say there is hope. There is hope. There is hope. And the devil says, how do you know there's hope? Because Jesus lives. There's hope and the flesh says there's no hope. How do you know there's hope to the flesh? Because Jesus lives. Because Jesus lives. There's hope. There's hope. Well, I'm his and he's mine. And when I yield myself to him, he's allowed to do with me what he wants to do. I was, man, I was frantically trying to get a message together this morning. Praying and 
studying and all reading and praying and studying and reading, praying and studying. And didn't get out here and didn't even get to open my Bible. But I'm okay with that. Who in here is okay with that? Raise your hand if you're okay with that. You're okay with how things went today? Oh, I'm, I'm well okay with how things went today. If you didn't get help today, it ain't my fault. If you didn't get help today, it ain't his fault. You can still get help today. You can still get help today. You're going to get help by this, by looking to him. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I can't believe right now, honestly. And, and You know, they tell me when you're encouraging somebody and you've got, somebody to, you've got to rebuke somebody and they tell you to build a sandwich and it's a sandwich of encouragement first. It's, uh, you know, uh, build them up in the middle and encourage them or, or tear them down in the middle and build them up at the end. I'm going to do the, the exact opposite. I'm putting the meat on the outside of the bread today. I started out rebuking you. Then I come in here with the, the middle, put the bread in the middle. You say, man, that's making the sandwich backwards. It's messier that way. Sometimes things need to get messy before they get better. And then I'm going to come to the end of this thing, brother, and I'm going to say something else. I can't believe the disdain of, of, of the Spirit of God in here today. Some of you sit here and you have disdained the Holy Spirit because of the way you've acted during this service. Some of you didn't even have enough faith to get up and come and ask God to help you. That's called disdaining the Holy Spirit. And then there's something else too makes me mad. Right in the middle of the invitation, everybody in here wants to start walking around, going to the bathroom and this, that, and the other. And let me tell you something, Miguel. That is disrespect to the Holy Spirit. After the Holy Ghost has moved in this place in a mighty way, and then there's no care during the invitation for the Spirit of God, much less the preacher of God. And you know what? And even the other the people didn't want to try to get help. Disdain, disrespect. Now it's time for me to go to Malachi. I told you one, didn't I? And there you go. You see, one of the sins of the people in Malachi was disdain and disrespect. They did not respect God. Here's what God said in Malachi 3.10. He said, uh, prove me with your tithes and your offerings. And he said, see if I won't open the windows of, of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you can't even receive. He said, there'll be more than meat in my house. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, look at this, and running over that kind of blessings on your life. Do you know why you ain't getting to experience those kind of blessings? Because you disrespect the Word of God. God said, prove me. Here was the three points of my message today. First of all, we need to repent. Agree with me. Don't, look here. Don't sit out there and tell me that you're holier than thou. If you are, everybody else get away from them because lightning's fixing to strike. Tell me that you're giving your all to God right now. That's disrespect because He gave you His all. The very first thing we need to do is repent. The very first thing. See, we think about how do we get the blessings of God on our life. We need to give our tithes and offerings. I love what I read as I studied the other day. I was looking up commentaries on Malachi 3.10. And the very first thing I read was this right here, Pat. That all preachers, they take this uh, Malachi 3.10, these tithes and offerings, and manipulate people to give more to God in money-wise. But I'm telling you, the book of Malachi is a message to the people of God. Hey, quit disrespecting God. And the first call wasn't tithes and offerings. The first call was repentance. You want to see the blessings of God on your life? Repent! Repent! What is repentance? It's a change of mind that, that turns to a change of action. 
Hey, when I repented on January the 1st, 2003, I went from living my way to living His way. No, I've not always been perfect, but I've stayed in the way. And God's brought me here today, hey, to tell you to repent. Then the second thing Malachi says, if you want to see the blessings of God pour out on your family, upon your land, upon your church, hey, is this right here? You need to reverence God. There's no fear of God in here. Hey, listen here. i am tell you something. Hey, there's no fear of God in here. I, I, I'm being honest with you. I, I, as hard as I preach and as bad as I sweat, I need a little sip of water every now and then. And some of you come in here popping pop cans and, and drink bottles and leave. I picked up water bottles in this sanctuary this morning. When I got here before church started, I pick up gum papers and sucker sticks and all kinds of stuff. Hey, listen, there's no fear of God. Hey, you don't reverence God's house, amen. Hey, and therefore you don't reverence God who gave you this house. And guess what? If you ain't careful, He'll take this house from you. The Bible said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Jeremiah uh, Jeremiah said fear of the Lord, but Joshua said fear of the Lord. And here's when Joshua said fear of the Lord. He said right now. Right now. Right now, fear of the Lord. That's reverence. That's a holy awe. When we come into this place, we ought to realize we're coming into a place that God has ordained and sanctioned to worship Him. You didn't get into the courts of God and get into the holy place or get into the holiest of holies just any old way you wanted to come. Hey, they was qualification. They was things required or you didn't get to see God. My message had three requirements. Number one, repentance. Everybody in here ought to repent. God, I've not done my best for you. Miguel, this church would be packed out. Thirteen years, if I'd have done my best, this church would have been packed out. I come down the road telling God this morning, I'm sorry. I'm sorry in gutter dirt. I'm sorrier, I'm sorrier than a low, be- a low, a low down rotten snake because I've not done my best for God. I hate it. I'm sorry. You know what? Hey, watch this, James Bird. I Thirteen years is behind me starting today, and I can't get one of them back. Not one of them. And all the regrets. Oh, there's been some mountaintops, man. We've seen some mountaintop experiences. But man, we could have lived near the mountaintop if we'd have done our best. Yeah, I know. We're getting tired of hearing it. Well, I ain't tired yet because my feet ain't hurting. Even if I got shoes that don't support me too good. First requirement, we want to see them blessings. I, who in here is interested in the abundance of God being on your family? Right here, raise your hand. It starts with repentance, Brother Avery. You go read Malachi. And then it goes on to reverence. It's getting back to when you come into this place, hey, take your shoes off, you're on holy ground. Hey, watch this right here. Moses, hey, Moses uh, saw something strange in that desert over there. He said, man, that bush is on fire, but I don't hear no, I don't hear no kindling cracking. I don't, I don't hear that bush burning, consuming up by the fire of God. I don't hear that. He said, that's something strange. I've never seen that before. And he turned aside to go over here hey, to, uh, to, to, to see what was going on. And the God of heaven spoke out of that burning bush. He said, hey Moses, take your shoes off. You're on holy ground. I'm thankful that my mama took me to church when I was a little boy. Hey, listen here. They was preachers who preached with their shoes off. Hey, Wayne Peters would preach with his shoes off. Hey, I'm going to tell you this right here. Uh, listen here. Uh, uh, not only, uh, what was his name? Uh, the man used to kick Billy Calhoun. Hey, used to play, preach without his shoes on. Hey, I'm going to tell you something else. And I'm going to tell you other preachers. We've had missionaries come here. I believe it was Obed Massal. When he'd come, he'd take his shoes off. And when he walked up on the platform, he preached with his shoes off. Hey, because you had a holy fear for God. There's no fear of God. There's no fear of God. Malachi said, you want to see the heavens roll back? And you want to see God put a funnel over your house and pour out blessings on you that you can't hold on to? That all the world will see that there is a God? And start revering me. 
Amen. Amen. Then the third thing you said, Pat, are you interested? You raised your hand. You was like one of the first ones that said, I want the blessings of God. See, it's easy to raise your hand and say, I want the blessings of God. Anybody can say it. But see, God puts that little word in the Bible and it says, if. This is one preacher right here. I ain't preaching a prosperity gospel. Hey, I'm telling you, there's a requirement to it. If my people. In other words, God said, I will. You ain't got to doubt what God's going to do. You ain't got to doubt God can heal you. You ain't got to doubt God can help you. Hey, God said, if you will repent. If you will revere me. And then here's the words the tithes and offerings come in. He said, and if you'll rely upon me. You see, can I get two offering plates back there, Brother Steve? Shake out one, the least amount. What, I don't, just give me two offering plates. I'm, be, I'm, I'm putting this sandwich together. Who in here wants to handle mayonnaise on their outside of the bread? Watch this right here. I'm glad you brought a deep one. Amen. <laughs> That's called disdain right there. That wasn't funny. Here is the other way that you get the windows of heaven rolled back. Be under the spout where the glory falls out. He says, prove me with your tithes and offerings. You know why some of you ain't never going to see God do anything for you? Because you don't trust Him. Reliance means to trust. Proverbs 3 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding and in all thy ways acknowledge Him, He'll direct your paths. He said, and then He goes on down and said, Honor the Lord with thy substance or with the first fruits of all thine increase. So, so shall thou barns be filled with plenty. You don't trust Him. You don't rely on Him. Therefore, on Sunday, I, I, I'm going to guarantee you if I could read your mind, half of you in here says, I'm so glad that they don't pass the offering plate no more. Because I don't have to feel guilty anymore. I don't have to feel guilty. I'm going to tell you something. I'm glad I get to give. Because all I'm doing with giving is I'm proving Him. I'm finding out how faithful he is. I went to the bank this morning. I drawed out my tithes and offerings. Brother Avery, when I got done in one account, I had to put mine in two accounts so I could draw them out and get it all out at one time. I drawed out my, out of my account, Brother Avery. I had $17 left in one, and I had $40 left in the other one. And I promise you, I give a whole lot more than $17 and 40 I haven't given God my leftovers. I've given God my best. Oh yeah. 2021. Who gives a rip about who's in the White House? I don't care. I cut it off on election night. That bunch of political mess. I ain't watched Fox News since. I cut that mess off. My phone, I wish this stupid thing would quit alerting me. I don't care. Watch this right here. I done my part in voting and it didn't turn out the way I voted. You think I'm going to cry about it? Hey, listen, if Donald Trump would have got in there, I wouldn't have been any better off. Hey, if Joe Biden, and since he's in there, I'm not going to be any worse off. You said, preacher, hold on a minute. Hey, he's going to raise taxes. I don't care if he raises taxes. Hey, when Barack Obama was in office, I was paying $4 a gallon. George Bush was in office. I was paying $4 a gallon for gas. And I ain't run out. I ain't walked one mile since. It don't make no difference who's in the White House. God said if you'll put some substance in my house, I'll make sure you got plenty. I don't care who runs this country. Amen. Turn that mess off. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look in His wonderful face and the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Amen. What's caused you to have anxiety is Fox News. Amen. Y'all got a two for one today. Y'all need to look here. That's the reason we got the offering plates up front. 
Because two for one means y'all going to have to pay twice before you get out of here. <laughs> Renee, I got to tell on you. I, I prayed for you first. Okay, so it's like it justifies me to tell on you, okay? It's just because she'll let me. She called the other night. Said she lost her wallet. She called Bradley and Kayla. Now it's already gone. The church is already locked up. She says she lost her wallet. Kayla got really antsy about this losing her wallet thing because uh, they say Renee is, you know, notorious for carrying a lot of cash. And I said, praise God, somebody can. Amen. But uh, uh, so the next day she finds her wallet. Praise God. She finds, I'm glad she did. I know what it's like to lose a wallet. And it's, I, well, I know what it's like for somebody to come in your office in the church while you're out here preaching and they steal your wallet and then they come to the altar on drugs with your wallet in your pocket. You get your arm around them praying for them. They go out here and spend your money. I know what it's like. Oh, yeah. That happened before you got here, Brother Abraham. Didn't it, Miss Janet? Boy, Donald Burns was so stinking mad. Miss Judy, he was so stinking mad. He said, Preacher, he said, we'll tear their pain. I'm telling him he was mad. He was mad. And then we found out about it. He was worse than that. So anyway, Renee finds her wallet. She gets her wallet. And Kayla said, did they spend your money? All that money she's supposed to carry, you know. She said, no. They didn't spend no money. She said, because I didn't put it all in the offering plate. <laughs> Renee? You didn't lose anything. You laid up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust don't corrupt. And look here, where men don't break through and steal. Brother Aaron, it's good preaching. Man, listen, I'm just now getting my second wind, Pat. And I know your feet's hurting, but your feet ain't hurting no more than mine is because we're here. I'm 300 pounds, and I'm standing on two things that shouldn't be made that small for a man my size. Amen. Back over in Nehemiah's day, when they opened up the Word of God in the street and they began to read it, the people, the mamas, the daddies, and the children stood up up until noon while they was reading the Bible. Amen. That's good, ain't it? I want God's blessing. I'm sitting out this coming year. I told Sarah, where'd well, she go anyhow? Man alive, she ain't even here to hear this. 30 years tomorrow, Pat. 30 years tomorrow, that woman said, I do, to me. She didn't know what she was getting. Oh, no. <laughs> she had no plan. <laughs> she said, I ain't married no truck driver. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, she did. I love it, too, man. I ain't married no preacher. Oh, yes, yeah, she did. <laughs> I love that, too. Who knows what's next? But I think she'll hold on because it's been good. 30 years. 13 here, 30 there. It makes for a good weekend, don't Brother Aaron? I told her at the beginning of 2020, I didn't know coronavirus. Man, I ain't no prophet. I can't see what's coming. If the Bible don't say coronavirus, I don't see what's coming. Hey, watch this. I told her, I said, uh, she wants a farmhouse. Who in here thinks she deserves a farmhouse? If you don't raise your hand, I'm going to come and, I'm, I was coming to slap you right now. <laughs> well, the only bad thing about that is, James, is that I told her at the beginning of 2020 I was going to provoke God to give us one. You think God can give you a house? I said, here's how we're going to do it. All right, she said, okay, I'm listening. I said, we're going to double our faith promise. What? We're going to double our faith promise? Are you kidding me? She never even questioned. You see, a few years ago when I told you I was going to give my salary back, Y'all, y'all convinced me to take it back. Oh, well, that won't happen no more. Because once you give it to me, 
I can do what I want to with it. That's exactly right. We're going into 2021. I ain't got that farmhouse yet. Sure she ain't listening. <laughs> but she does. You better quit doing that. But she does want that farm table and them chairs and that bench and all that stuff for Christmas. <laughs> Hey, you got to have a table to put in the house. So I get the table first. <laughs> you ain't got to throw nothing up to me. I've been her husband for 30 years. Okay. All right, so here we go. You want the blessings of God on your life. Malachi says, repent, revere, and rely. Tyson off. <clears throat> oh yeah. Here's here's what you do. You got you got a wallet on you? Wallet. I just want to hold it. I'm not gonna open it. I don't know. I ain't. <laughs> Repent, revere, and rely. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, preacher, I want God's blessings. Oh yeah. Then you're gonna have to turn loose. You're going to have to turn loose. You see, reliance is total abandonment. Total abandonment. I want God's blessings, but I want to do it my way. Eh, sorry, you ain't going to get them. You ain't going to get them. You say, preacher, you have been so discouraging today. Hallelujah. I've done two-thirds of my job right. Right? Here's the good news. Y'all ready? Alan Wright on the radio said, are you ready for some good news? <laughs> no evening service today. No evening service today. I give you two sermons. I give you more. I give you more this morning than most preachers give in a week. You can chew on what I give you today. You chew on that for a week. When you come back next week, you say, Preacher, we don't even need to hear from you again. If you'll chew on what I said today. You know what? Herm Jordan back, they do a wonderful job. They put everything online. Go to Lex Wynn Baptist Church on YouTube and you can watch this service all over again. You can listen to it six days next week before we get back here next week. And I guarantee you, you're going to come back shouting. Amen. All right, who's ready to go home? Raise your hand. Oh, I ain't done yet. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Help yourself. I've been in here thinking this man's crazy. <laughs> I've been in here. Now, now, let me say something. That's, that's my day, and for 29 years, I've watched him. I've watched him, everything he's done. Now, I'm a dad. I got one watching me. Me and Kayla just put him in school. Gospel life. $300 more a month just for him to go to school. I ain't got it. I ain't got it. The bills I got barely, the church is faithful to take care of them. You know, do a wonderful job. But the bills I got take up what I get. So $300 more puts me in a negative. My wife looked at me and she said, why did you even let me sign him up for school? I said, because God will take care. Amen. And I want to testify. The first two months has already been taken care of. First two months. If you think this man's crazy, you're in the wrong. Because everything he's ever taught me, I'm putting into action. And now I've got my own stories to tell. I told him the other day we was riding somewhere. We was talking about this bus trip and this bus trip. I said, Daddy, you know the only thing wrong with those stories? 
I said, they're yours. I said, I want mine. And now I'm starting to add them up. The first two months already. Just let it go. Follow me. Because I guarantee you what he preached works. Amen. I went to the mailbox the other day, Brother Aaron, and Bradley has not went to the post office and changed his address. So all his mail comes to my house, which is very aggravating, by the way. Because <laughs> all his junk mail comes to my house, and I hate junk mail. You understand? I, look here. When I go to the mailbox, I go to the mailbox. I get all the mail out of the box. I go to the trash can first outside. Trash, 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 bill, trash, bill, trash, trash, trash. I was done that the other day, Tanya. And I seen something. It said Bradley Golf, but it says North Carolina Department of Revenue. And I got that new pocket knife for my bed for my birthday. Whew. Department of Revenue means one or two things. You either owe or you're getting. They don't just, you, they're not your friends, so they're not going to write you a thank you letter. You know what I'm saying? I've never got a thank you letter for paying taxes. Okay. So, I, you know, Bradley's 29, Bubba's 24, and Shana's 25, and I'm not allowed to open their mail. If they're 17, anything comes to my mailbox for a game. Oh, I got my knife out of my pocket. I said, Whew, hey, something good in here. I had to put my knife back in my pocket. Then I picked my phone up. I called Brad. I said, man, I'm going to call him. I'm going to ask him if it's okay to open this mail. Right. He didn't answer the phone. Didn't answer. He don't even answer me. So now y'all know how he feels. I know how I feel and all that stuff. I know how you feel. He didn't answer. He finally come to the house, and he's like me. So he's like he said, he follows daddy. You go to the mailbox, you come out, throw stuff in the trash. He come back, he said, oh, that's just trash. He was... And then he said, hold up, man, let me open this thing. He opened that thing, Miss Tanya, and they done sent him a grant for $300 plus dollars to take care of Josiah's schooling. And the note in it says, this is for child care that if you that it, it increased due to COVID-19. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Under the spout where the glory falls out. Amen. Amen. Who in here like to have their child care paid for? Amen. Okay, okay. No evening service. So everybody, no, I didn't get no amens. I didn't get no amens. So that means you want to come back. Some of you even grunted. I can't believe that. Oh, I got, yes. I just want to thank the Lord, and He can be faithful. I'm one of those who's got a house. And I got my deposit for my home through COVID funding, the, re the, the, the rebate and everybody got. Yeah. I was able to get my home. I lost a home over 10 years ago. Um, not our fault. God just put me somewhere else for the time being. Right. Now He's put me in a home. When we went to the lawyer for closing, we got money back. Amen. For the closing on the house. We have been blessed. Amen. And it's because we, we pay our tithes. We Amen. give. We Absolutely. love others. It does not kill you to give. Amen. It does give back. Amen. I'm talking about in the middle of COVID, man. COVID. COVID. That's a code word for blessing. That's a code word, man. Y'all got to learn to read code. Hard times means blessings. COVID. You get money back from a lawyer. What? Back from a lawyer? That, hey, look. The abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded through their, their liberality abounded through their, their, their deep poverty. How in the world's all that work? It's because God's up there. He's directing it. Amen. And He only directs it to those who pay their tithes and their offerings. And, and, and repents and, and, and listen and reveres and, and, and relies. He, he only does it for them. You say, well, but God's been good to me. Yeah, that's just, you're just getting leftovers. You're just getting over yonder in the corner of the fields. Praise God, I'm in the middle of the field. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about a truck in the driveway, title in the cabinet. I like it. Can I buy you a truck? Are you kidding me? No more bills. My name don't get signed. No. Well, what if I can get you one and you get a title to it? No. Is there some trick to it? God said, shame on you. I asked James, at Bert, I said, James, what in the world kind of woman would take all she's ever saved and give it to her husband? James says, the kind of woman that loves her. The kind of woman that loves her husband. 30 years. 30 years. She worked 18, 16 and a half. I better get that half in there. 16 and a half years for Kmart. And she's been at Baptist Hospital for over 20 years now. And for the last 13 years, she's worked two full-time jobs. Two full-time jobs. You say, what other job she have? Being, being a pastor's wife. And you know what she gets? Well, that's just a message for another day. But everybody in this church right here, everybody in here ought to respect my wife. Because there ain't nobody in this church works harder than my wife does. She has to bear your burden and my burden. And my burden is your burden. And she has to go to work every day, work 40 hours a week. She works for two doctors that are sticklers. I'm talking about perfectionists. She has to deal with that pressure every day, all day, 40 hours a week, then come and put up with this mess here for 13 years. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm still building that sandwich. My brother makes the best sandwiches in the world. I'm talking about there like that right yonder. Watch this, Ray. Watch it. I'm not hungry yet, Pat. I told you it wasn't going to be short. And I, Do you want me to apologize, Brother Abram? Let me tell you what she gets. Forgotten. You're very kind. Very kind. I did go get Baskin Robbins yesterday, though. Me and Bubba. And I got enough for coffee. Left. A church ought to be ashamed that has a pastor's wife that'll work a full-time job, keep insurance on his family so you don't have to pay it. And put up with all she has to put up with. And do it faithfully. She lost her mama. She lost her brother. She lost her sister. Her daughter was sick unto death. And very few people come to visit her while she was there. I'm talking about very few people come over to visit her while she was over there. And the only church she's ever missed is when Shana was in the hospital. And she's been this pastor's wife for 13 years. Did anybody even get her a card today? Brother Aaron, I got forty dollars in one account and seventeen dollars in another account, and I, but I got a but I got a credit card, and you can fault me if you want to, but I'm going to take that credit card and I'm going to take her out of town tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday. Fault me if you want to, and that credit card's got a fifteen hundred dollar limit on it. And I'm going to see. I'm going to get to where that thing says you need to slow down. I'm going to the Shenandoah Valley to a bed and breakfast. There's a log cabin built in 1700 and something. I've never been to Shenandoah Valley. Completely renovated. Never been to Shenandoah Valley. 200 mile long valley. Got all kind of history. We're going. We're going to celebrate our 30 years of history. And make new history. Amen. Okay. Okay. And the only reason we're still here at 10 to 1. Is because Pat laughed earlier. Alright. Alright we're done. If you don't come back. You got all I had. You got all I had. There's two things.
Oh, yeah, may you, yes. And mostly, I'm, it's a testimony. Let it stand. Yeah. Especially for you, Bradley. Because many years ago, I had a young son that God was really leading us to put him in to Christian schools. And followed that leading and put him in Christian school. And when he was four, in fourth grade, his daddy died. Mm -hmm. So, he meet, and he was a truck driver. Immediately, my finances were down about a quarter of what they had been. Wow. And uh, everybody was telling me. You know, well, you can take him out of that school. You can take him out of that school. You can, you can, uh, uh, that'll save you some money. And I said, no. God led us to put him in that school, and God has not led to take him out. And if God says take him out, I'll take him out. Right. But until God says take him out, right. I'm leaving him in that school. Right. I, said, I will not do this to him. He's lost his daddy his whole life. Right. He's been changed. Right. I won't take him out of this school unless I know God is leading in that direction. Can I tell you that uh, that's where he went to school all of his life? That's, and there was never, before his daddy died, I'd never been able to pay a year's tuition at a time. Because, and you got, a, you got a month off if you paid a year at a time or he was going. But you know why after that there was never a year that I was not able to pay the whole year's tuition at one time and be able to save that one month of tuition every year. I just saw God provide and sometimes really mir miraculous hey. ways. That's so, good. So, and yes, most of you here know that my son's not living for the Lord now, but I'm thankful for that time and I believe with all my heart I'm going to see him back singing praises to God one day Amen. And, so, and serving the Lord. Amen. 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 Two things I need to do before we leave. Number one, here's what God's laid on my heart this morning. He said, Preacher, you're holding an offering plate. That means you were taking an offering. You're exactly right. I, I, was, I was talking to uh, Joanne and Ed, or I was talking to Joanne this week about uh, uh, this situations. And, uh, and so uh, Eddie is taking chemotherapy and uh, you can become, you know, uh, uh, chemotherapy kind of, it, it oozes out of your, your, your pores and stuff. And so you're always having to clean the house, clean the house, clean the house. And so they, they have to have Clorox wipes and, and Lysol and disinfectants and all this, that and other, because it's really safety toward the other people that is around him because of the chemotherapy. And so the Lord, you know, when you're talking to people, you just hear certain things. And, uh, and I know this, Eddie and Joanne both are on Social Security. Uh, Joanne's not, no longer able to, to teach, and she has, to, she has to be at home with Eddie. And Social Security don't pay much. Social Security don't pay much. And so uh, uh, I, I put a little money in here, and what I'd ask you to do is uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, put this uh, offering plate back on the back back there. And uh, I want you to put a few things in the offering plate like money. And then I want, I want to make you aware of next time you're shopping, uh, I want you to see if you can find Lysol that sprays and uh, Clorox wipes and Lysol wipes and, and just things that are disinfecting to help the house stay clean uh, so we can help get Eddie through this. And uh, I, the Bible says, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And so I'm going to put the money, I'm going to put the offering plate uh, in the back. And so Bradley, here's, and, then, and then when you go by, uh, put, it wherever, put, it, put it on that table over yonder so they can, they'll know which one it goes to. And uh, and then and then James when he gets he can count it and then just give it over to Joanne and that'll help them with a few things they have extra gas going back and forth to the doctors co-pays uh, just whatever so just you know she she can have that and then uh, uh, second thing is uh, now that we're done uh, we're going to have a uh, a birthday celebration downstairs for Brother Aaron. Your birthday, um, Brother Aaron's birthday was November the third, and and uh, uh, Brother Aaron, I apologize for not for not texting you or calling you, but we've been putting something together for you, brother. I love you, man. And uh, iron sharpens iron, and uh, I'm a better person because Brother Aaron MacArthur. And so uh, we're gonna go downstairs. We got some finger food. That's where my wife's at. We got some finger foods and some cake and some stuff downstairs. So we will give you something, Pat. Say hello to you for that. 
She, she ain't even opening her mouth no more. She's afraid you'll go to two, amen? But then we're going to go downstairs and we're going to have some time with Brother Aaron and his wife and children have set this up this week. And, and uh, so we've got something special for him. Uh, we want to sing happy birthday to Brother Aaron, Josh. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And now, Miss Tanya, before we leave and be dismissed, Miss Tanya wants to say a few words. And this could be dangerous, but they were. Oh, come on, Alexandra. Yeah, you stand, come stand with your mama. She ain't going to make you speak. You can quote verses. You can say, I love you, Daddy. I would love my other children to be here, too. As I did for you. Uh, Happy birthday. Come on in the house. That's what I'm talking about. Come on in the house. They've been patiently waiting on the long-winded preacher. been a rock this week as well. I've been just trying to put this together for you. But 44 years ago, and just for y'all who want to do the math, I was nine, and I saw this beautiful boy, and I looked at him, and I didn't see anything else. And I watched him grow up, and he is the most kind and compassionate person I know, the most generous person I know, who always wishes other people the best. I don't know, you know, I tell him all the time, I don't know anybody else who has no envy of some anybody. He never, I've never heard him in 33 years of marriage say, I wish I had something somebody else had. I don't care what he doesn't have or what he does have, he always encourages other people. I know I'm prejudiced, but it's good for me to have seen this week how many other people see him the way I see him. And sweetheart, we have I've had, we've had family, we've had your friends, and we've had your church family. All have worked together with your children to get you a gift you have been trying to get forever. And I know you tend to know what it is because I know I can't spend it from you. But we have right here, come up here, please. <laughs> well, <this is> bad, <laughs> right here. They have everyone Pizan. here. Thank you all for the help to make this possible. Pizan. They have all went in to give you this. Okay. <laughs> so, but this is key. And we, I would have settled for just getting you just a round model. But Pastor Eric told me, don't sell. Now, I couldn't get you the one he wanted to get you, but you know what, Pastor, I'm going to tell you not to feel bad about this because you know what? I was trying to get you the one, him the one that you wanted us to get him, but we ended up getting him the one he wanted. Yeah. And that's why I think God provided. And honestly, I was just thinking, and I told the kids, I said, we're just going to self and get him the money for to go toward it. But God gave us the money exactly for it. Yeah. And that was just amazing. And this is like, I'm talking about the 11th hour. I'm talking about two hours before we thought we were going to need a deadline. And then it was like, okay, we've got fun. And that's. Pastor Eric has fasted and prayed, and he encouraged me to fast and pray this week. And it's been just it's very spiritual experience for me. And he said this was a test for me, and it was. So thank you, Pastor Eric, for the strength that you gave me. Because my husband is usually my strength, but you've been a rock for me this week. And thank you all so much for making this possible for him. I'm just honestly, I feel so happy and so blessed to realize how many people care about my husband. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday, brother. Amen. Amen. Show him how much he has been for us as a deacon, too, because Absolutely. he has, he does care about all of us so much. And so it's kind of a combination of his, his, his hey, thank you for being our deacon, and thank you for being such a great father. Absolutely. Absolutely. Happy birthday. Mm-hmm. Amen. Uh, thank you, wife. Thank you, children. Thank y'all. And I do, I kind of said, y'all, y'all pray for me, too, because uh, I, I do care for this church. I care for the things that I, I I ask for forgiveness too. I don't do all things well. 2020, I told my wife, 2021. I was going to be there in a lot of ways. Um, I'm just asking God for leadership and direction. And I 
till my wife all the time. I said, I don't know what God's going to do and how he's going to do it, but you just better be ready. <laughs> so, and that scares me because I don't know what that means. But I, I know this that this man does stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. He tried to be a good example for all of us. And I'm constantly thinking God has helped me to be by his side and let him know I do care and I stand and I won't move in the direction of God in which God leads him. Because he's being led by the one true God, and it is our responsibility and obligation to be behind this little ship. Thank, Thank you so much for what y'all have done. Amen. It's very appreciated. Amen. I'm talking shit. Y'all want more of it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. I like the box. service. Somebody call Janet Gill, tell her we're not having evening service. And uh, uh, honestly, uh, sometimes we don't need to be concerned about time. We need to be concerned about spending time with Him. Right. Amen. And uh, today we've spent time with Him. Uh, we've bragged on the Lord. We've celebrated. We've, uh, we've been convicted. We, we've, we've been chastised. We've been encouraged. Whatever. And I hope you leave here today a better person and with more faith than you come in here with. Amen. Brother, they we're going, we're going to have some finger foods and uh, things downstairs. Uh, and uh, thank y'all so much for what y'all have done this week. Amen. I know y'all have sacrificed. And uh, I promise you uh, that uh, uh, you give and it shall be given. God will continue to bless you. And thank you for what you've done. And uh, church, thank you for these last 13 years. Had we not come here 13 years ago, we wouldn't have a story to tell. And I'm very thankful to be here today. Amen. Brother Aaron, uh, you, we'll let you pray, dismiss in prayer, ask God's blessings over our fellowship together, okay?